Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And I'm really excited for today's guest. He is all about passive income in a big, big way. But before we talk to our guests, I'd be remiss. I didn't properly introduce our co-host. You know him. You love him. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. If you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. And of course, if you want to start learning more about everything from Zapier to land investing to whatever it is, check out investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? Pulse is still normal. Respiration's fine. Let's talk to the smartest guy in the room. Paul Moore. What? So if, yeah, of course. Uh, Paul is a big deal after graduating with an engineering degree and an MBA from Big Ten, Ohio State. Paul, I don't know if you, uh, I'm an IU grad. My son's at IU. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, so, great school too. Yeah, there you go. Um, Paul sold a, uh, had a publicly traded firm uh, that he sold out for $2.9 million five years later from uh, after working at, in, at Ford. Um, he was a finalist for Erson Young's Michigan Entrepreneur of the Year, two years straight. Uh, but then he entered the real estate sector. He's completed 85 real estate investments and exits. He's appeared on an HGTV special rehabbed and managed dozens of rental properties, developed a waterfront subdivision, started two successful online real estate marketing firms. I can go on and on, but Paul is currently the managing director of two commercial real estate funds at Wellings Capital. Paul Moore, how are you? Hey, great, Mark. Great to be here. Hey, Scott. Hey, how's it going? So, so Paul, let's just rewind the tape and, and kind of give us your your story that we didn't really, you know, the bio doesn't really do its just do it justice. Yeah, you know, after I sold my um, uh, company in Michigan, I was only 33, had a couple million dollars in the bank, and I thought I'm gonna kind of semi-retire to the mountains. I bought 120 acres on the top of a Blue Ridge Mountain in Virginia, and I said, "People, I'm an investor." And uh, you know what? I really didn't know the first thing about investing, guys. I, I I confused investing and speculating. You know, investing is when your principal is generally safe and you've got a chance to make a return. And speculating is when your principal is not at all safe and you have a chance to make a return. And I confused the two and it got me in a lot of trouble. I mean, I, I made a lot of money uh, occasionally, but I lost a lot of money more often. I I kept swinging for the fences, which is fun as an entrepreneur, but often foolish as an investor, and especially if you do it with all your capital. So I went through about 20 years of lessons with that. And uh, when I realized the difference, I ended up in commercial real estate, and we'll talk more about that later. But um, I went through all types of residential real estate. I'm, you know, I'd make a lot of money on a deal. And then instead of sinking 20% of it into another deal, I'd you know, put it all into another deal and then lose it all. And you know what I realized? If you keep playing double or nothing with all of your capital, you're going to land on nothing at some point and you'll have to start over. I did that a bunch of times. Yeah, that, uh, that totally makes sense. And Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? Well, I have, I I definitely agree that uh, as an investor, you don't, you definitely don't want to take all the risks that you would as an entrepreneur, right? You know, like that's, that's part of the deal. It's like you, you want to make sure that you're, if you're investing, you, you have a recipe, right? Like, you know, that you put this in and it's going to come out on the other side. It's something that's greater than what you put it in at. And there's always risk or things that don't go as planned, but man, like that, th there is an element of risk in there, but man, if you can just get dialed in to, Hey, this is what we do. Mm -hmm. And eatable, and boring, that is, the, that is the best formula for an investor is something that's repeatable and boring. You know, I wrote an article about why investing should be boring. You know, um, <clears throat> uh, Paul Samuelson was the first US economics uh, Nobel Prize winner. And he said, investing should be more like watching paint dry or watching grass grow. If you want excitement, take $800 and go to Las Vegas. And I didn't realize that 
um, I'm a musician on the side just for fun. And I, I think about people like, you know, my favorite band Rush or James Taylor, you know, who spend years and years, decades playing the same songs every night from like, you know, James Taylor, Fire and Rain. What's that, 1970? But he has to put the same energy in it because it's new for that crowd that night. You know, that's boring. He's got to be bored, you know, almost 50 years playing that song, but he does it. And that's what a true pro does. An amateur keeps chasing shiny objects and trying to start something new without a formula. And I love what you said there. That's, that's very true, Scott. That's, uh, that's what we need to do. We need to be getting to a place where we're willing to deal with and survive and thrive in a, you know, in, with the monotony of boredom, you know? So, Mark, I, I, I went, to, uh, ahead, I was just in Vegas and I'm not a gambler, but man, I, I actually got back yesterday, but yesterday morning I fell for like the Vegas, like trap. Like I was there for four days and I did great not spending a dime in the casino. And then I'm just walking through and guess what? Right there in front of me was the, the penny slots. So I'm like penny slots. How can I lose? So I put in $5 into the penny slots. Well, the penny slots, the, the deal with it is that you have to play 100 pennies per game. So I basically had five games, right? And it's like, bloom, lost, bloom, lost. I won 40 cents, if you can figure that, right? At the end, it's like, here, print out your certificate for 40 cents. I pull it out. I look at it. I'm like, this is, I can't even go cash this thing in. That's how you – literally, it was like seconds, seconds, like not even a minute. $5 was gone. So to me, that's like – the way that sometimes people, people, you know, go about the investing piece. I just literally just handed it to some of the guy. I'm like, here, man, you good luck. He probably won like 40 million off of it, but that's yeah. a story. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. I, I don't believe in unearned income, Scott Todd. I, th oh, I think I, if, if you won 40 million, you would have blown it because you wouldn't have appreciated it, but that's a whole other subject. Yeah. Right. So Paul, I want to ask you because I've been on your podcast. Um, how to lose money, which is, which is really a lot of fun for me. Uh, you got a great co-host, but the question is, why did you title your podcast, how to lose money? You know, over the years I got to know, I, I would go to these in real estate investing meetings or other types of things I've been involved with over the years. And the people would always be on stage with trumpeting their glorious stories and all their, you know, some of them in their 20s, they'd be, you know, multimillionaire, whatever. And I would watch the people around my table and sometimes we had discussion groups and their shoulders would just shrink down, you know. And I would look at them and, and, and say, you know, that, that story was great, but it caused discouragement. It caused people to think, well, I'll never be able to do that. I'll never be that great of an entrepreneur or a real estate investor or a father or whatever. And I thought, wouldn't it be great if we could all know the struggles these people went through along the way? And then I got to know some of those people as I got on stage and realized, they had terrible discouragements and struggles and pain along the way. And when they would tell me this, all of a sudden I would feel great hope. I'm like, oh, I can relate to that. And you're still this successful. Well, that's great. And I just realized, you know, if we could tell people's failure, defeat, discouragement, struggles, you know, that these heroes had along the path to success, we can give people hope that they you know, everybody's the hero of their own story. We can give people hope that you can, you know, you can change, you can overcome, you can succeed as well. I think we learn a lot more from failure than we do from success anyway. And so uh, that's why we uh, called it How to Lose Money. I love it. I love it. So, Paul, you, you've been investing in all different types of real estate, residential, commercial, self-storage. And if I was a listener... And let's just say I, I've never done any type of investing at all. Where would you recommend, based on your experience, somebody would start and let's just say their goal is they want to earn, you know, 15% on their money in a passive way. They're sick of making, you know, 0% in the bank. Yeah. You know, a lot of people with the, uh, all the house hunters and all types of other uh, HGTV shows. I mean, I was on house hunters and I can tell you that a lot of people think, well, I could do that. 
Uh, my buddy and I started flipping houses almost 20 years ago before flipping was a thing. I mean, it applied to uh, pancakes and birds. But uh, anyway, it uh, didn't apply to houses, but we were actually buying fixer-uppers, as we called them. And a lot of people think that's the perfect entry point. But, you know, I talk to people every day from Bigger Pockets, where I do a lot of work, and uh, from podcasts. And I realize these people are really frustrated. They realize, you know, that you know, the spending every waking moment chasing deals in this overheated market and and then spending their evenings and weekends, you know, swinging a hammer or, you know, painting, it's, it's really not paying off the way they hoped. And what people realize is I want the great uh, opportunity to be a real estate investor, but I don't think this time things working for me. I talked to an oral surgeon who, what would he make? Probably hundreds and hundreds of dollars an hour. He said he was building a portfolio of 20 rental homes and he was on number three and it was driving him nuts. He said, I had oral surgery yesterday. Between surgeries, I was on the phone with painters and plumbers and it's just not working for me. And uh, here's the thing. Residential real estate is valued by comps, as we almost all know. And that means if you're Chip and Joanna Gaines Jr. and you can go out and beautifully renovate this $300,000 house, let's say you add 250000 to it and you've got five fifty dollars in it. You've got, you know, a, a finished attic, finished basement, build out an addition, gold-plated fixtures, everything. If that neighborhood only supports a $300,000 house, you're not gonna get your 550 out of it. That's because residential real estate is based on the comparable properties in the neighborhood. Commercial real estate is not at all like that. It's based on a value formula. And this is probably the most important thing I'll say on this show. The value of commercial real estate is the income divided by the rate of return. And more specifically, it's the net operating income divided by what we call the cap rate or the capitalization rate, which is the normal rate of return that an investor would expect for that type of property in this market at this time. Now, cap rates used to run about eight to 10% or more. Uh, I was just at a a mobile home park university in Vegas over the weekend myself, and uh, they were talking about, you know, cap rates of 10 or 12 or 14%, but typically they're running um, you know, around five or six or seven percent these days. But if you take the net operating income divided by the cap rate, you'll get the value. Well, that means you can force appreciation. You can in you can do specific things to increase the net operating income, and you can do specific things sometimes, not always, to compress the cap rate. And by doing that, you can dramatically improve the value of an asset. The problem most of us have is we don't know how to get access to these commercial real estate uh, opportunities. And in a minute, if you'll give me time, I will go over an example of how this value formula can work. But the problem is most of us don't have meaningful access to this. I was talking to an investor uh, in Europe recently, and she said she was struggling to manage these single family and small multifamily from across the Atlantic. And she said, even if she was in town, she realized she'd still have these same struggles dealing with, you know, vacancy and property managers and all these massive hassles. And then I told her about commercial real estate and the light bulb went on for her. She said, wait a minute, why am I working harder than I need to, to make less than I could? And she realized that our company could give her access. And there's a lot of other companies out there that can give people access to commercial real estate. The Jobs Act of 2012 and all kinds of other things have opened doors for crowdfunding and for hundreds and hundreds of syndicators who can take people's money, invest them passively, grow their income, expand their wealth massively by this formula I mentioned. And people can have access without lifting a finger. They can stay on their day job. They can slow down eventually on their day job, maybe retire, and they can make the same. And if they invest it with the right syndicator, which is tough to find, if they can make the same or much, much more money than they could make on doing it on their own, and they just all they have to do is walk to their mailbox to get it. Makes sense. Scott Todd. I mean, you know, some, some people have more time than money and other people have more money than time, right? You know, like, in, and I think that if you can find the people that have what you don't have, whether it's time or money, well, then, you know, th- then you, you're off to a winning formula. And I think that a lot of times people think that they, they're, 
that investing has to be a, um, uh, you know, a, kind of a, an independent sport and it doesn't have to be right. You know, like if you, you reference the oral surgeon, well, the oral surgeon should continue to do what he does best and let somebody else who has the time or even the desire to go out there and to, to manage some property or to, to invest the money it's a lot like, why, why do you go to, you know, why do you go to a financial advisor? Because th their whole job is to understand what's happening in the marketplace. Is, is now the time to be in bonds or is now the time to be in stocks or equities or whatever it is? Let, let somebody who, you know, lives and breathes this stuff every single day, let them be your expert, if you will. Why do it yourself? But I know that we live in that, you know, that do it yourself or type of mentality that I'm going to do it myself. Well, if you do, you're going to waste a lot of time and money probably. It's good thought. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's one of those things where I think you just have to be really realistic about your bandwidth. And if you don't have the bandwidth, it's, you're better off making a nice return with somebody that this is all they do all day long and they have a track record of success doing it. So Paul, you've got two funds at Wellings uh, Capital. Mm -hmm. And what is the focus of those funds? Like where would you, where are you putting your money for investors now? Well, you know, I wrote a book on multifamily investing in 2016 and it was not at all arrogantly called The Perfect Investment. And uh, that, uh, that book's still selling pretty well, but you know, the problem with the perfect investment is it's not perfect anymore if you can't find any deals that make sense. And a lot of people are finding these days that they're not finding deals that make sense in multifamily. And they're wondering, you know, if, you know, I read Howard Mark's book recently, Mastering the Market Cycle, and um, realized, you know, people are taking the biggest risks at the time they should be the most conservative, and that's right near the top of the market. And I started thinking, you know, maybe we should try to find other assets that are not as risky and that do well and that not, not as overheated is what I meant to say, and that do really well in any economy. Well, I think apartments generally did pretty well during the recession. I've got a lot of data for that. But we also found uh, other asset classes, including self-storage and mobile home parks, that have something that apartments don't right now, and that is a very fragmented ownership base. The owners of, of self-storage and mobile home parks are often mom and pops. And because of that, they leave a lot of money on the table. They don't have the time, the resources, or even the desire to operate and juice every dollar they can out of a property. And because of this value formula I mentioned, uh, it's possible for a professional operator to take over to acquire one of these mom and pop owned parks or self-storage facilities and dramatically increase the income and through leverage uh, significantly increase returns for investors. So we've been investing in these funds in those three asset classes, self-storage, mobile home parks, and to a very small degree, opportunistically apartments. Um, and the returns that these operators we're investing with have been seeing are pretty hard to believe, but you know, I can use this formula to show you how they're doing it, but they're getting returns of 40 to 60 or even more percent annually. Now that won't go on forever. You know, the mom and pops are dying off and selling off. Institutionals are coming into these spaces and jumping in, jumping in and grabbing these assets, which by the way, makes a great seller for our operators because if you can buy at a 7% cap rate, uh, and even if you didn't improve the income at all, and you can sell it to an institutional at a five and a half percent cap rate, that's about a 25 or 30 percent increase in asset value. But with leverage, that's a 60 or 70 percent appreciation just from having the right buyer and the right seller, not to mention all the income you're driving in the numerator of your equation, which takes your return, your appreciation well over 100 percent. Let's say it takes three years to get. Well, 140% return in three years, you know, that's, you know, that's a pretty big, that's a pretty nice annual return in the 40, 50% range. Wow. I love it. I love it. Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? 
I, I agree. I mean, there's not much more to say beyond that. Yeah, I would I would add that leverage makes it even better. I mean, if if you you know if you have sixty six percent you know leverage, you're only putting a third of your money in. That means you can multiply that number for the return on equity by you know three, and so it it significantly increases the return for the investor. Yeah, I think what's interesting, Paul, about those two asset classes that a lot of people don't understand or don't not, not they don't understand they don't think about it it's not really talked about a lot they're the, the two safest asset classes in real estate they have the lowest default rates number one is self-storage number two are mobile home parks that's exactly right even though when you say mobile home parks i mean people kind of put their nose up to it and they're like oh gosh i wouldn't touch that those are you know toxic or I don't know what what is you know today what is the uh, the stigma for mobile home parks? There's a lot of stigma. You know, most of us have lived in apartments or rental homes. Most of us, or many of us at least, have used self storage units, and there's no stigma there. But most of us have not lived in a mobile home park. Most of us don't even know somebody who lives in a mobile home park, and there is a stigma. But you know, ten thousand people a day are turning sixty five years old. And over half of them have less than $10,000 saved for retirement. Well, a lot of them don't have a lot of options and they do have home equity in many cases and they can trade that in for a decent mobile home and a two to 400, 200, two to $500 lot rent. And they can have a lot of freedom. They can enjoy retirement. They can, you know, make that $1,500 social security check stretch and be able to afford their home and have a lot less stress than managing their own home. The stigma is there, but like Robert Helms on the Real Estate Guys Radio loves to say, you know, invest, live where you want and invest where it makes sense. And I'll tell you, mobile home parks really make a lot of sense. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, we're at that point now, Paul, where we're gonna ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable, where the art of passive income listeners can go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? All right. Well, um, I, you know, I, 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 neuroscience tells us that uh, we spend up to about a third of our time during the day daydreaming. And they do brain scan, scans and watch people's brains and to see that they're daydreaming, they're fantasizing about their potential future or what, you know, they're fearing the potential outcome of their life. But they don't do that when they're listening to or watching a story. Their brains lock in. So we need to learn to tell good stories. Donald Miller has a book out called Story Brand. And uh, I just read the book over the weekend while I was in Vegas, and I'm really fairly obsessed with it right now. So I'd recommend the book Story Brand. If you want to learn more, you can go to their website and learn how to tell your, whatever you're doing here as an investor, an entrepreneur, a business person, learn to tell your story. And they really help a lot at the Story Brand book and uh, podcast. All right, fantastic. I actually have that book on Audible. And um, it's, it's really a phenomenal book and makes so much sense. And there's so much wisdom in it because that's how we, we learn and how our brains remember things are through stories. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's really phenomenal. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? All right, Mark, we all fall into this trap and it's uh, like productivity, right? We all go in our email and like everybody and their brother sent us an email, everybody. And as marketers, we want, we want to send these emails, but it kills our productivity. So you've been to these websites. We're like, Hey, give us your email address and get on our newsletter and you get this thing and you want this thing. And, but yet then you don't want the emails that come along with it. And then it's like, if, it, if you're like me, man, you're like, I don't really want to unsubscribe because what do I do? You know, I might want it. And then months go on. And next thing you know, it's like delete, 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 delete. You don't even open them up anymore. Well, look, here's the solution. Go to subscriptionzero.com. And I just put in the chat for you too, subscriptionzero.com. Because when you go there, you can sign up, you get an email address, like a subscription zero email address that you give to all of these things. 
And then what happens is you're on their newsletters, but they don't come right to your inbox. They go to your subscription zero inbox that gets forwarded to you like once a day with a summary of everything that you've missed. Nice. Of like 40 emails you get like one email that summarizes everything that you missed and it like puts your brain at ease and you're more productive. I love I, it. I love this. That's good stuff right there. That is go. a great tip of the week. I'm writing wow. that down. I'm, I'm already, uh, I'm already in there. I'm, I'm already putting in my delivery day, my delivery time, uh, Sunday. So Hey guys, so what do you do? Do you, um, do you actually um, go back to a lot of your current subscriptions that you occasionally read and you change your email to that one? Uh, you could, or you could just uh, unsubscribe. And if like, I look, I always say, like, if you're not reading it, just unsubscribe it because they haven't meant that big of an impact to you anyway. And then if you ever want to go back, you'll be like, ah, oh, let me go find them again. And then you'll find them again, but just unsubscribe. It'll save you a lot of work too. I love it. And then all the future ones just go there. It's like, it's oh, like I, so I just got my, my dummy future. email, Scott. What's that? I just got my dummy email. So yeah. now I'm going to go to a text and then uh -huh. I'm going to add that as a shortcut. Yeah. And this is great. Yeah. So you have a new email address. And, uh, you know, you get a weekly, weekly digest. So you can do a weekly or a daily. Um, Mark did, when I did mine, I couldn't remember. I thought it was, daily, it's, it's, daily, it's actually, you get one, it's once a week. You get a del you one delivery day. Even better. Yeah. You know, what day did you choose Mark? What day did you choose? I, I choose, I chose Sunday. Sunday. Okay. So like Sunday. Oh, well, you can change it. You can change yeah, it. Yeah. You're not locked into it. Yeah. Brilliant. I love it. All right. Well, my tip of the week is learn more about Paul, his investment philosophy, his funds. Go to wellingscapital.com, wellingscapital.com, and learn more there. And I want to thank the listeners, and I implore you to do us one little favor. It's actually three little favors, because the only way, the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like a Paul Moore from wellingscapital.com is if you do this, you got to subscribe, you got to rate, you got to review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review to support at the We are going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit course. So please do that. Today's podcast is sponsored by flight school. Learn how to start investing in raw land with the best in the business, Scott Todd, let him be your Sherpa. Just go to the landgeek.com forward slash training to learn more there. All right, Paul, are we good? We're good. It's great to be here. Thanks. Thanks so much for being here. Scott Todd, are we good? We're good, Mark. All right. I want to thank the listeners again and let freedom ring. Thanks everybody.